Welcome to your Yes Build Life. I'm your host, Brenda Winkle, educator, healer, speaker, guide, and fierce advocate for your yes. I help sensitive and successful men and women find, reclaim, and live from their full embodied yes. Through empowering you to understand your energetic hygiene, establish healthy boundaries, and heal your nervous system, you'll be able to create your yes-filled life and move through your days with more freedom, more ease, and more joy. You'll hear inspiring stories of people who found their full-bodied yes, thought leaders who pursued their own dreams and are living life on their terms, and learn new ways to find the courage, joy, ease, and freedom to more fully step into your yes-filled life. Say no to the good so you can say yes to the great. Join me on this journey to discover your yes-filled life. Whether you're looking to break free from the golden handcuffs, start a new business, find your dream job, or simply live with more intention and mindfulness, I've got you covered. Let's explore the possibilities together and make your dreams a reality. Ready? Let's do this. Let's get you to your Yes, filled life. Hello, and welcome to your Yes, filled life. I'm your host, Brenda Winkle. Today on the podcast, we have my friend, Aneta Kuzma. You are going to love hearing from Aneta. But before we get to meet Aneta, I want you to meet a client of mine. Kendra has been working with me for the past several months, and she is a member of Yes Academy. Now, if you've been with me for a while, you know that Yes Academy started out as a course, and it has since transformed into a mastermind and healing program for world changers. It's a year long container, and it includes a retreat. Our first retreat is coming up in April of 2024. And we are now enrolling new members in Yes Academy. We have spots for 16 new people. So I wanted you to hear from Kendra about her experience inside Yes Academy. Hi, my name is Kendra, and I first worked with Brenda in some of her meditation workshops that she was offering. And what really stood out to me then was whenever I meditated with Brenda, I could get so much deeper into myself than I was able to do alone or with anybody else that I had meditated with. And then that sort of evolved into um, being part of some of her Brenda's breathwork um, offerings. And that experience was really transformative. Um, I had never felt so regulated in my nervous system and able to hold my energy for like longer and longer periods um, of time. And I had been on this journey for a while of sort of trying to discover my voice and, and how I want to use it in the world. And I just felt like something was still blocking me. And so that's when um, I said yes to Yes Academy. And I've been in Yes Academy for a little over four months now, and it has been incredible. Um, I have had some huge, huge breakthroughs. I have set down some things that I have been carrying around literally for decades. Um, And it's just been such an incredible journey of self-discovery and journeying to the me that I want to be and my most authentic self. And when I think about Brenda and I think about the Yes Academy um, container, the two things that really come to mind for me are love and safety. Um, Brenda, in everything she does, has just created for me such a safe, 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 safe space to explore, to go back, to go forward, to be vulnerable. Um, Yeah, it has just meant so much to me to have a space that I could just show up exactly as myself with no expectations to to deal with. Um, and I'm just met there every single time by so, so much love and acceptance. And it has just been such an incredible community to grow and to heal um, in. So um, yeah, if you've got anything, 
prompting you that maybe it's time to go a little deeper or you just need a safe and loving place to explore the you that you want to become, then I can't recommend um, Yes Academy enough. Um, Brenda, I love you. Um, yes Academy mates, I love you. And I'm just so grateful to, um, to all of you for everything you bring every single week and for just all of the love and acceptance that you have provided. And I look forward to continuing to grow together. I look forward, uh, and I'm getting closer, um, but I'm looking forward to really feeling safe and knowing what I want to do with my voice in the world and putting down all those things that have been holding me back. For more information, go to brendawinkle.com forward slash yes dash academy dash course. Now let's get ready to meet Aneta. Aneta Kuzma is a coach, wellness consultant, yoga and meditation teacher, breathwork facilitator, author, podcast host, and founder of the Ardalian Kuzma Group. Her passion is helping her clients create transformational change. A former bank executive, she now works with high achieving professionals and entrepreneurs to redefine success and design lives they love. As a wellness consultant, she works with organizations and their teams to overcome burnout, create mindful leadership, increase focus, creativity, and productivity, and achieve optimal health. She is the host of the Live the Width of Your Life podcast and a book author to Live the Width of Your Life, 365 Daily Meditations on Living with Purpose, Passion, and Peace. And I was a guest on Annetta's podcast, and I'm going to link that episode in the show notes. Her, her podcast is absolutely incredible. You're going to want to go have a listen. But first, let's meet Annetta Kuzma. Hi, Annetta. I'm so glad you're here. Brenda, I am so happy to be here. I am so grateful that you are in my life. Oh, the feeling is mutual. I am so excited for this conversation because when I think of people who are living their yes filled lives, I think of the yes as like, yes, that feeling we get when something goes really right. You yeah. embody that and it's so inspiring mm. to watch. So I wondered if we could start by just dropping into a little bit about you and the work that you do. And then yeah. I want to hear more about how you have found your yes filled life. Mm. Well, first of all, I love your yes filled life and it aligns so much to live the width of your life, which of course is my company and what I do. And so of course it makes sense that we are having this conversation today <laughs> because living your yes filled life to me means also living the width of your life, not just the length of it. And so, um, I work with professionals and I work with entrepreneurs and I work with people that when you look at them. From the outside, you would say, wow, they have achieved success. They are at the pinnacle of their career, typically doing things that they're successful at by external measures. Yet they come to me because they say, what is wrong with me? I'm not fulfilled. I'm stressed out. I'm burned out. Or what I thought was going to bring me the satisfaction that I was expecting in life you know, based on society's rules, isn't working any longer. So I work with them to one, identify what does it mean to live your yes full life, right? To live the with, what does that look like for you? How do you redefine success? How do you create optimal health mentally, physically, emotionally, and spiritually in your life? And then how do you take daily imperfect action in the direction of your dreams and your goals? And when we do that, we are unstoppable. And the reason I am so passionate about this is because I wasn't doing this. When I was in the corporate world, I was burned out. I was stressed. I was resentful. I was terrified that I didn't have a bigger purpose or mission for my life. And when I got help with the coach and I was able to start putting in new practices in my own life and started showing up and committed to myself, I thought, I have to tell other people about this and I have to help other people be able to do this for their own life. So what you see in me is like, I'm so grateful that I'm able to do this and I want to share it with everybody else because I feel like everybody can achieve this in their life. Mm, 
This is so relatable and it comes up for so many of us, especially high achievers, which yes. so many of our listeners are high achievers. And <clears throat> one of the things that high achievers often do, and I, I, I'm curious what your take is on this. We find ways that we can achieve even when there's not something to achieve, just because we like that little hit of achievement. And yeah. sometimes yeah. I found in my own life that it's easy for me to get kind of off on the wrong track in the name of achievement, chasing recognition and accolades instead of chasing the intrinsic joy. And yeah. It seems like that's kind of what you're talking about when you're talking about working with entrepreneurs and professionals who are outwardly successful. Yes. Oh, completely, Brenda, because we have been trained, right, for lack of a better word, since the youngest of ages to respond to that reinforcement. You know, mm -hmm. getting a gold sticker in second grade on my name every single day. I didn't want a little black dot, right? Or it would make me feel right. like I was less than or getting the grade that you were hoping for or getting the recognition at uh, assemblies or events, right? There were so many times where that's where you measured your worth by. And then the corporate world, um, it sort of reinforces that, right? Mm -hmm. It's what is your salary? What is your title? Did you get a bonus this year? Did you get promoted? Did you get promoted within a certain amount of time? Did you get to work with this leader? Did you get selected for this project? Were you the MVP? And so these become the things that we expect and we do become conditioned to the adrenaline or to the accolades or to the feel good hormones, right? Like the dopamine hits because typically we're under great stress. And so it feels good and it becomes very addictive for us to have some of these other low dopamine hits. Um, because most of the time, you know, we've got cortisol running through our <laughs> veins nonstop mm -hmm. and other stressors. And so I do think that it is such a paradigm shift to then tell people, what if that weren't true? What if your value and whether you're lovable or not, or your worth, none of that has to do anything with your title or how much money you're making, or how big your house is, or your car, or where your kids go to school, any of those things. Like, what does it really mean? And that's the hard work. That's where people struggle, because we've never been asked those questions. Where, what institution promoted that type of thinking? You have to actually seek it out and do the work that you and I are doing and find the mentors that we have and continue to put the work in all the time and shift and strip and release and continue to grow and, uh, and get closer to the truth. But mm -hmm. yeah, it definitely, to answer your question in a long winded way, I see that with high achievers all the time. And it's something I have to constantly work on for myself because it is a conditioning that is just so ingrained after so many decades. <laughs> Absolutely. And for me, I find it's a stress response now. It didn't yeah. used to be, oh, it yes. used to be intentionally, but now if I notice myself chasing accolades, chasing busyness, I, I have to give myself a lot of grace and think, oh, this mm. is a response to something. This is not how yes. I'm choosing to live. So why am I busy mm. right now? Oh my gosh. I love that. And that's like a light bulb moment for me too, because it's the trigger, something triggered in me, a conditioned response. And, um, and I always used to say when I was in corporate, I'd say under periods of sustained stress, people become the worst versions of themselves. Mm -hmm. And it's where all the filters are gone, all the training and the stuff that we, you know, that we normally employ um, is gone out the window and you're responding, responding emotionally. Mm -hmm. So it's very similar to, yeah, to what you're stating there. Yeah. So if we took yeah. this to a really granular level. And we wanted to help somebody who's listening, who's thinking, yeah. okay, you're totally talking about me. Mm -hmm. I'm on the hamster wheel. I don't know how to yeah. get off without getting flipped off the hamster wheel. Yes. What, what would be one or two really granular things that mm -hmm. you could offer someone to help them just begin to, to experience a little bit more ease? Yeah, it's a super great question. I think it starts with the choices we make daily. And so I always tell everyone, one of the first exercises I do with folks is to say, let's identify your core values. What are the things that you say are most important to you? And then are you showing up for yourself in those values daily? 
let's look at your calendar today, this whole week, this month. Let's look at that. And so I actually created something for your audience. It's something that um, I think everyone could benefit from, which is really three daily routines. And you could do them under 20 minutes. That'll help you in the morning, during the day, and in the evening to really be more present, to be more mindful, to be more intentional, like you were saying before. And over time, of course, these become habits. It takes anywhere, we used to say 21 days, but now I'm hearing it could take up to six to eight months to actually consistently develop a new habit. So it does take a little bit of time for folks. But I would say that's a really good place to start is what can I do every day to show up myself for myself? mentally, physically, emotionally, and spiritually that aligns to my values and my mm -hmm. goals and start small, celebrate the wins, show up consistently for yourself, give yourself grace when it doesn't work out. And then over time, you can start to build on that. We don't have to overhaul everything. If we try to, we're never going to do it. Mm, I love everything that you said. The small daily things add up to big successes. Absolutely. Yes. So thank yeah. you so much for creating this page for the listeners. And yes. can you tell us the link and I'll put it in the show yes. notes too, but for the person who's not going to click the show notes, sometimes it's supportive yes. to have it. Yes. Focused. Oh my gosh. So I try to make it easy. Um, so the first part of the URL is my name, Aneta Kuzma.com, A-N-E-T-A-K-U-Z-M-A.com. And then the backslash your yes filled life. And so it'll take you to a page specifically for your audience, Brenda. And I do have that little free takeaway as well as um, I have a code for folks, the first five folks who sign up for a breath session with me. And there's access to some other things that uh, I offer in terms of my services. That's amazing. Thank you. Thank you for doing that. You're welcome. You're welcome. My pleasure. So one of the things that um, I have watched you do very recently is you have taken a large, I mean, by retreat standards, a large group of people to an Italian retreat. Can you talk to us about that? I'm just, I'm, I'm so curious and I kind of want to go. <laughs> yes. Well, the request is that I do this every year um, and even come back to the home that we stay that in Tuscany. It, you know, we talk about vision boards, we talk about vision statements, they work um, on my vision board, even this year, I have a picture of Florence and the Tuscan countryside, because I've always dreamed of doing a retreat in Tuscany. And I, um, I'd never been north of Florence. So I actually had never been to the Tuscan countryside. But I wanted to um, rent a villa. I wanted to see the Tuscan sun, the rolling hills, to be in the olive groves, near the wine, near the great food, all of it. And I found the perfect house. Like I found the house that was in my vision and I was so excited about it. And then I put it out to my meditation and yoga group and in my email community. And the entire thing not only sold out that house, like almost immediately, because I think people are starved to go to travel. They're in my community. So they were like, okay, I trust you. I want to do this work. But so many people wanted to do it because it sold out within like two days. And then people contacted me, clients that I love. And they're like, can't you just find another villa like nearby? And it sounds crazy. And I said, I didn't think the chances were even gonna, that I could, but I did. I found one that was like mm -hmm. one in my, a mile and a half away down the road. And so we rented two villas. And so I had 18 other people. So there were a total of 19, including me. And I will tell you, you know, we talk about crunchiness and like, Ooh, can I hold this much space? Um, we did it. It was beautiful. It was amazing. It was magical. And people got to experience all of the beauty of everything that you can in that area. Um, but it also, I will say, ideally, you're going to be want to bring everyone in one space in one house. Um, mm -hmm. I just think that there's much more control being able to do it that way. But it was, it was a, a trip of a lifetime and I'm ready to keep doing them. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, where are we going next? You know, figure I'm going to start thinking about it. Cause people are like ready to be on the wait list. They've already said that participants are like, I'm coming next year. Tell me where mm. we're going to go. That's amazing. And yeah. for many people, travel is a huge yes. And yes. I, I talk to people and they usually are in one of two camps. Either they are 
seasoned travelers and they love to travel and they're willing to travel either yeah. by themselves or in a group or they long to travel. I have met yes. almost no one who says, I don't want to travel. If if I hear that, right. when I ask clarifying questions, what I learn yeah. is there's fear behind it. It's not that there's not a desire. Yeah. It's that it feels too scary. Do you find that that's yes. true? So if we're talking to the yes. person who might be scared to do something mm -hmm. really big, like travel internationally to attend a retreat yeah. or even traveling across the country to a different state, which statistics show yeah. doesn't happen for a lot of us. What yes. is something you have done or coach people to do that can help get them over that fear? Mm -hmm. That's a really great one. And some people never do. Um, I did have actually one participant who'd never left the country that came on this retreat. And so for her, it was, she wanted to, but ne could never imagine what she needed to do to get prepared for it. So what I did with my group of folks is I made it as simple as possible. Like I had a packing list, you know, even things like what would someone who's never traveled before need to know about getting a converter and an adapter and, you know, airplane travel and those types of things. Um, I created a spreadsheet where we tracked everybody's flights and who was arriving when and coordinated their transportation from Florence to the countryside so they didn't have to figure that out or worry about it. And so taking out some of the fears and making it more simple for folks so that they really could just show up and know that the rest was going to be taken care of for them, I think was a huge relief and help. Mm -hmm. And, um, but, you know, and also, like you said, is just getting to understand from folks, what is your fear? And let's talk through it. Cause sometimes those fears are really, um, false evidence appearing real, right? Mm -hmm. You know, we've heard that acronym before is really digging in and saying, what is the real true concern and issue? And is that something that you can overcome? Because maybe that's something I can help them with, or maybe that's something that is much deeper seated and they need different type of help to, to uh, overcome that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I love that. Yeah. And I think that yeah. scaffolding makes it so much more attainable. So yes, if you're listening right now and you're thinking, but who, who could scaffold things for me? Well, Annetta or I could. <laughs> yes, yes, we can, yeah. of course. And, you know, once people are there, like you want, I know for me, and I know you do retreats as well, Brenda, like, you know, we're, we feel responsible for making sure people feel comfortable and that they're provided, you know, the comforts that they need. And, um, and so we definitely take all that into account when we do retreats. That's amazing. I love that. So as we kind of come to a close, we're not done yet, but we're just kind of, I want to make sure that we have a <laughs> chance to really talk about this important point. Is there something that you either did or did not do that has brought you to your yes filled life? Mm. I would say, and I see this all the time with folks is deciding to make a change and like really deciding and committing to yourself that you are going to choose differently, even if you don't know the how, mm -hmm. like the how comes afterwards. It's the decision that like, no, I deserve better. I'm going to invest in myself and make this commitment. That I think was a starting point. And for me, that meant I'm not going to try to figure this out on my own because it hasn't worked for the last, you know, 40 some years. So I hired a coach and I think it's so important when we are on our path to say, you know what, there are coaches who specialize in whose whole life and career is to actually help me figure out this piece. I had a coach for mindset. I've had a coach for setting the life vision. I've had a coach for podcast. And it's so important to be able to say, you know what, I don't need to do it alone. I'm worth the investment of time and resources and dollars to invest in myself. And I trust that this person is going to help me get there faster and it in a more complete way. And so I would say that the decision and then the investment were probably the two things that really shifted everything. And then from there, it's execution. And listen, all of us know how to execute. And if you don't, you can Google it. You can figure it out as Marie <laughs> Forleo says. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I absolutely love that. And I feel like the decision is often the most difficult part of the journey. Yes, it is. 
it's the decision to leap. It feels like it's the unknown. And we spend so much of our life trying to figure out the how and thinking through all the hows, even if things that don't exist, like it's like the worst case scenarios. And you don't have to figure that out to just decide that you're going to do something differently. And that's like one of the biggest things that I tell people, like I decided I was going to do a Tuscan retreat. I didn't have the details figured out afterwards. It gave myself time to figure it out. I decided to launch a podcast and gave myself a month to figure out how to do it, right? All of these things, it's the decision and it's Mm -hmm. the commitment and it's choosing to show up every single day in that direction. Yes. Uh, Oh, I love this. I love this. (laughs) And you know, everything starts to feel simpler once that decision is made. Because once you make the decision, all of a sudden, there's no more bandwidth going in your mind between should I or shouldn't I? And the next thing you know, the resources present themselves, whether it's in the form of a coach or a YouTube video or a book that falls off the shelf or a conversation with a friend about the thing you want to do. And so that decision, oh, I love that. And too, Brenda, don't you agree? And maybe um, I shouldn't put words in your mouth, but you can decide to do something and you may decide after you do it that, okay, I'm not really into this. That's not failure. We don't have to wait to decide that like, oh yes, this absolutely has to be the thing that I love to do. I thought I wanted to teach at universities. Like I really thought like part of my business was going to be teaching courses at universities. Well, I did it and it's not, it's not probably something I'm going to actively pursue, but I wouldn't have known that unless I did it a few times and it was a great experience, but that doesn't mean that that was a failure. That just means that now I have information and I'm going to apply my energy towards something else. Mm -hmm. That's it. And so that's the other thing I tell people is you don't have to decide that this is forever. Just decide and try it and move in that direction and then say, okay, energetically, how does this feel? Does this feel right? Is this the right thing to do? Have you had those experiences too? Yes. And I agree with you, Anetta. I think that anytime that we give ourselves permission to try something, that is the success. It doesn't matter whether we continue to pursue it or whether we hit some brick walls, that decision to try it is so cool and empowering. And then if we change our mind, That's great. In Yes Academy, I have a bill of rights. And one of those bill of rights is I have the right to change my mind. Oh my God. I love that so much. (laughs) And so when we give ourselves that permission to change our minds, it gives us a lot more freedom to try things instead of thinking I have to choose this thing and stick with it for the rest of my life. Like for my personality and my system, that would shut me down. Yeah, I'm, I might choose sure. to do the same thing for the rest of my life, but if you told me I had to, I, I just feel yeah. like a collapse coming. <laughs> I completely agree with you. And I think that's why so many people are stuck in their thinking minds because they might actually either consciously or not think that that has to be that way. And I think I was stuck in that spot. Like, well, I can't do something different because I don't know what that is. And so I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to stay where I am. Mm -hmm. And I think we do that with relationships. I think we do it in places we live, cities we live in. It it's, you know, going on the same vacations all the time. It's like jobs. I mean, and when you can break free of it and allow yourself to get super curious and just allow curiosity to drive you, I think it's a whole big game changer. Absolutely. And that is a beautiful place for us to come to a close, letting curiosity be the driver. Annetta, excuse me, before we close, I'd love for our listeners to know how they can connect with you. Can you share uh, where you are on LinkedIn and Instagram? Sure. Um, So I am on Instagram and LinkedIn probably most often. And so on LinkedIn, it's my full name, Aneta Ardelian Kuzma. Um, That's A-R-D-E-L-I-A-N. But I think if you just search for Aneta Kuzma, you'll find me. And then on Instagram, it's also at Ardelian Kuzma. And that's A-R-D-E-L-I-A-N Kuzma because my company is Ardelian Kuzma Group. And, um, which are my two names. And so, um, and I'm the only one that you'll find (laughs) with that (laughs) handle. So uh, you should find me pretty easily. And, uh, yeah, I would love for folks to, to follow, to connect, to send me a DM. Um, I'm just here. I love love people. I love helping 
people. And um, if you're part of Brenda's community, guarantee that, you know, we are like-minded. So yeah, I would love uh, to meet you all. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Isn't Anetta amazing? So here are the takeaways. Number one, redefining success. We often chase external validation, but true success lies in aligning our actions with our personal values. It's time we redefine what success means to us. Number two, the power of daily routines. Small, consistent actions can lead to big changes. And Anetta shared three daily routines that can be done in under 20 minutes to promote mindfulness and intentionality. Remember that developing new habits takes time and consistency. Grab Anetta's free gift to support your own daily routines at a Kuzma group, a K U Z M A group.com forward slash daily dash routines, or click the link in the show notes. Number three, celebrating small wins. It's important to celebrate small victories and give ourselves grace when things don't go as planned. Every step forward, no matter how small, is progress. Number four, investing in yourself. You don't have to do everything alone. We both, Anetta and I, have found immense value in hiring coaches to help in different areas of of our lives. Investing in yourself is always worth it. Number five, embracing change and overcoming fear. Fear can hold us back from new experiences like traveling or attending retreats, but making a decision to change and commit to yourself is the starting point. Remember trying something and changing your mind is not a failure, but it's a way to gain information and redirect energy towards something else. And number six, the magic of retreats. Anetta hosts retreats all over the world, most recently in Tuscany, which was really a dream come true for her. And both of us host retreats. So invitation to check out both of our retreat offerings and to experience a retreat in your area as well. It's truly life-changing. To connect with Anetta, she's got a one-page link that you can connect with her on Linktree. And I have that link in the show notes. Okay. Now one more thing before I let you go today. The new moon is a beautiful time to really think about what you want to create. And we have one more new moon remaining in 2023. The last moon of last new moon of 2023 is on December 12th. And I'm hosting a new moon ceremony with breathwork on December 12th at 5 30 p.m pacific we'll be live for two hours that night and we will be dropping into a magical experience so here's the vibe bring your pajamas or your fuzzy socks and your sweatpants grab your favorite hot beverage bring your crystals your oracle cards your journal your blanket so you can cozy up We'll be diving into some breath work, helping you to really clear anything that might be a limiting belief. And then we'll also use that breath work to help you imagine into what you want your 2024 to really look like. I hope you come join me. It's $119 per person. You can register by going to brendawinkle.com forward slash new moon, all lowercase, all one word. Thank you so much for listening to your yes filled life. If you loved this episode, would you please consider sharing it with a friend? And if you haven't yet left the podcast a rating or a review, could you please go do that right now? It makes such a difference to the podcast and it'll take you about 30 seconds. Have a beautiful rest of your day and I'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.